All right, so this is gonna be a video on how to install a short throw shifter for a 2.2 liter Chevy Cobalt, not SS. The SS and 2.2 or 2.4 liter Cobalts have different transmissions. SS have F F35. Uh, the uh, other Cobalts have an F23 transmission, so I'm going to show you how to in how to do it on a 2.2 or 2.4. So in my case, I've already installed different shift knobs, different shift boots. So my process at the beginning is going to be a little different, but uh, first step is going to be removing these plastics, the shift knob. Um, in my case. It just slides up, throw that shit over there. And now we can just kind of pry these plastic pieces up. So you'll actually want to start with this one. Sorry, it's fucking dirty in here. Mine, pretty much, you can just pull on it enough and then it pops up. Just like that, slides up there clean that while it's off clean in here too while you have it off next step is to just kind of grab it pull it up be mindful of the outlets there's going to be a connector on them that you're going to want to remove before you get too far so you can see that all right so there you can see this then comes off and this is the type of connector you just got to give it a a push on the edge there and it'll slide out and now you can see the uh, internals and now we can take a look at the inside of our shifting mechanisms here as you can see it doesn't go directly into the transmission because the transmission is ahead of the firewall uh, instead it uses a linkage and um, yeah, I don't really know. So once you're at this step, this is per the ZZP installation video. He actually marks the location of the cables um, and the cable clamps where they're positioned with the Sharpie. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now that's just gonna give you a frame of reference so that when you reinstall the clamps, you're gonna know uh, roughly where they're supposed to go. So after that, we can then pull up on these things and release them. So now I got my linkage loosened up. I took the cable clamps off. The way to do this is you can either pull it up, which was kind of difficult for me. You wanna loosen this the uh, the gray or white part from the black piece. I shoved a, a screwdriver in like that. And then to loosen up this from the housing, I squeezed this with some pliers and pulled it up. So next up to remove this housing is going to be loosening up these four bolts here. Uh, those are 13 millimeters, so we're gonna undo those. So now I've removed the four bolts. This one is pretty hard to get to, so what I ended up doing is taking the extension off and it just barely fit and then cracked it loose, then just use the uh, socket to loosen it the rest of the way up. So now, one last thing before you can remove it is pull out this the wire harness from there. And then you can feel it's loose. Start wiggling around until you can pull it out. After quite a bit of just wiggling around, finally got this out and then we are left with this, which will be nice to clean. And we're gonna go ahead and take this inside so we can get a better look at it and have an easier time working on this, taking out this shifter putting in our short throw.
So once you have this out, this fits over there, you just gotta pull it off. Save that for later. Now in my case, I actually ended up breaking this pin that goes in there, but that's all right because we get a metal pin to replace it. All right, I got this a uh, bit cleaned up here, and now we can take a look at the shifter itself. So pull it out. So we have the shifter with the reverse lockout and a whole bunch of extra gaskets and such. So we're going to remove the reverse lockout because in the 2.2 you don't need it. So first things first, we're going to remove the shift knob here. Simply unscrew it and now this whole thing just wants to slide right off. And we can put this inside the box. Won't be needing that. Now we'll start greasing up the components that we do need. So what you can do is remove this off of it. I had to kind of destroy it to get that off. And then you can take this one that came from here and put it onto there, but we're gonna grease it up first. So I spread some grease all on these ball joints. I use silicon grease use white lithium I don't really know I have now installed the uh, plastic cage and this thing back on I got this mechanism back in and we're gonna slide this pin through so now we are going to put this pin in and it's actually directional you see the flat side so you're gonna want to look in and line it up with the uh, indentation on there now we're going to use this clip here and just slide it on. So remember to reinstall this gasket here and then get this. Make sure everything's lined up where it was. So now that that's popped in, we're going to take our retaining clip, slide that back in as well. We got the bottom linkage on, or a cable clamp, whatever it is, and uh, I just had to tap it on with a mallet. Now, the install that I'm following, which I will link in the description, uh, it recommends to cut this part out here, kind of where I'm drawing on. Um, some people say you don't, some people say you do, so we're going to not do it, and if it, and test it out, if it rubs or whatever then we'll take it back out and cut it but I'll be the one to test it so now we are pretty much ready to get back into the car and install this back in all right so we're back in the car here with our upgraded assembly and pretty much we're just gonna reverse the process and uh, All right, we're back in position here. We uh, are over the studs. One thing to keep in mind, you kind of got to feed these the cables through the clamps while you are sliding it back in and make sure that you're not pinching this harness here or that one. So now it's time to drop these bolts in or the nuts in and tighten everything down. All right, we are all tightened up and now we are going to push these back down into position here. Just like that till you hear the click. And now we can line up where our marks are. So you see that. Oh, we got the marks. So I was in neutral when I did this, which is probably not the best idea. I should have done it in gear. But this will just give us a rough estimate of where to clamp it down so right about there I'll just push down like that and right about there push down and now we can try out our gears so I'm gonna take a drive I'm gonna throw the shift knob on and I'm gonna take a drive around and 
see, but just from sitting, we can see it's going into every gear pretty well. Maybe it's a little tight to get into fifth. I might have to adjust that a little bit, but reverse is good. Yeah, we'll have to play around with it, see what it likes the best. Also, this is kind of worn out. I may get in there and replace this, uh, whatever this thing is, or try to figure out the, uh, maybe the gasket. The gasket was pretty old, so I might have to replace that and get rid of this wobble here. So I just went for a test drive, checked to make sure nothing was rubbing and it got into all the gears and it does. So I can looking down here, I don't see any signs of it rubbing. So I'm not going to end up cutting this plastic piece. Um, I'll link the, the shifter that I use so that you can avoid that as well. The first thoughts I have on this is that it does shorten it up a bit, but honestly, it's not that big of a difference. Um, I should have measured it beforehand, but for 50 bucks, I think this thing is worth it. It's fun, and it's if your thing is feeling a little sloppy, if your shifting is loose, or sometimes the like that ball joint gets all clogged up with old grease and you're gonna take it out and clean it anyway, you might as well just throw this in. It's got a weighted shift knob and it's threaded, so that alone is worth it for upgrading uh, shift knobs in the future. Other than that, you just throw on the plastic trim again and call it a day.